I want to read, uh, this is Romans 12, and that's what the, the D6 was, uh, was on this week coming up. And this is Romans 12, and the, the theme this week is Christian living. And this is Romans 12, uh, verse 9 through to 16. And I'm going to read 21 too, because that's kind of a good verse. Anyway, it says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. And then over to verse 21. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We're going to get you to stand and we're going to uh, worship God.
Father, the, the fact that uh, you were here before time began, whatever that even means, and we'll be here for eternity, and yet you love us, you created us, uh, you created us in your image, and uh, you want to know us, you want to commune with us one-on-one, -on -one. you care about us, you hear our prayers, you, uh, you know our hurts, you know our needs, and Lord, we live in a we live in a fallen world. We live in a a world with pain, with suffering. And God, we don't understand sometimes, but but you gave us free will. You gave us the choice of whether to love you or not love you. And so with with free will comes the chance that there will be bad times, that there will be evil, evil in the world just as there is good, and there will be suffering. Lord God, that we, we know though that uh, because of you there is good in the world, and because, um, because of that good, we can, uh, we can know you. And uh, Father, someday we will uh, we will be with you where there will be no suffering and no uh, uh, no evil and just over overwhelming joy. And we're thankful for that, Lord God. God, we have many things on our mind. There are many among us who are uh, who are hurting. Those who are alone. Um, those who are. Um, trapped in a, a body that is aging and uh, is, is unable to, to uh, carry out everything that once was possible. And so, Father, we think of those people. Lord God, we have uh, people who are battling illness. And, uh, Father, we think of Mita and uh, we, uh, we lift her up to you and place her in your care, she has uh, half a dozen more uh, uh, treatments, and there are 25. There, there are quite a few, Lord. I can't even wrap my head around it. And uh, we especially think of, of Jared and uh, Mitchell's. Um, it looks like uh, the fight is on again, but uh, we know there is power in you, Lord. There is. Uh, uh, there is there's victory in you. And so we're, we're praying into that, Lord God. Father, uh, you give us so much and uh, you provide so much and we're thankful for that, Lord God. So we, we just lift all of these prayers up to you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
kids haven't already gone to junior church. Maybe they have. Have they gone? Yeah. All right. And uh, let's just say a word of prayer for the uh, for the uh, offering. Lord God, uh, you are you are great in your providence. Lord God, you you give us so much. Uh, you take care of our our physical, but more so our spiritual needs, the needs of our, our very soul. And so, Lord God, we want to uh, give back something tangible to you, something uh, for the furtherance of your kingdom. So we give this with uh, glad and joyful hearts. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We move into uh, communion worship.
So I'd like for you to look at the picture. Yeah. I'm uh, going to ask that you do your own communion thought today. I'm going to ask that you look at that picture. Jesus suffered and died for our sins. And you might say, who am I that a king would bleed and die for me? Or who am I that he would pray not my will but thine for thee? And to an old wooden cross he'd go. Who am I? You may say what love he must have had for me. And what am I doing to show my love for him? You remember that we take the bread and the wine together. So once you have talked to yourself, and once you have talked to God, while looking at this picture, and that you feel you are ready, then take of the cup and the loaf. I'll ask Wayne if he would give thanks for them at this time. Heavenly <clears throat> Father, thank you for the table of remembrance. As you look at the cross in the picture, we see Jesus hanging on it, suffering and dying for us. This cup and this loaf is emblematic of that body and blood that is given for us. We ask you to bless it and bless each one to take part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to start with an update because I think some people know what's going on. I think there may be others that are not quite sure what's going on. So just for the sake of full disclosure, make sure everybody knows what's going on. We're on the, all on the same page. Uh, I took Jared to uh, Halifax uh, last Thursday for tests. And a CT scan revealed something that's in his lung that looks like it could be a tumor. Uh, or, or something like that. This particular cancer, uh, osteosarcoma, if it does recur, uh, most often it will show up in the lungs like this. So right now, uh, we don't know what it is. Uh, it's likely to be osteosarcoma, but, um, but it's, one, it's one little tiny tumor that they discovered. Uh, the doctor said it'll be uh, very easy to remove. Uh, it'll It'll, uh, it'll be day surgery, uh, and so it'll, it'll come out real quick. And then, and then after they do further tests or biopsies on that, then we'll know moving forward what further treatment options are going to be, whatever, whatever that might be. So right now I'm telling you what I know, uh, telling you what the doctors have told us, and uh, we won't really know anything other than uh, Jared will have surgery. And that may be next week sometime, it may be in the next couple weeks, we don't know, but you will have surgery here pretty soon. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's, that's what I have. So we cover your prayers, uh, please, and uh, know that you guys do pray, continue to pray. We've been our family through this uh, since we started, and, and we know that you'll continue to, to be that. So we, we're very grateful for you, and, uh, and we're just going to take this one day at a time like we always have. So... That's, uh, that's the blessing of God's word. He gives to us uh, the scripture to, uh, to empower us. And one of the things about being a, a preacher is that you bring your own personal stuff to the table. That may not be something that you appreciate all the time. Uh, <laughs> maybe sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But uh, in preparing for the sermon today and in reading through Romans chapter 12 and what we've been through this week... Um, you're going to get a dose of where I'm coming from, uh, my perspective, and, and what I need from the Lord. And hopefully it's something that will bless you as well. Romans chapter 12 concludes with this statement. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. This is what Paul says. Don't let evil... You, you, did you catch the don't let? Because that's a choice you make. Okay? Don't make the choice... To allow evil to conquer you. Don't allow evil to conquer you. Instead, conquer evil by doing good. That's how Paul concludes Romans chapter 12. 
scripture that Andy read earlier. So the question is, and I'm asking myself, and, and I'll ask you, is evil, has evil conquered you? Has evil won the day? During the day, we're going to fight a lot of battles. I don't think I'm alone in this. I think we all fight a lot of spiritual battles during the day. How many battles are you going to fight in a lifetime? <clears throat> think of all the spiritual battles that you'll engage in during the day and then multiply that times a lifetime. The same author of Romans also wrote this in Ephesians. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. And Jesus said it this way, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. Again, do you see the choice? If you follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Now there are some people who have that light. You know what I'm talking about. Because you live with Jesus. You know the power that I'm talking about. But there are people who fight spiritual battles every single day. And we're all kind of, we're all in this boat. Whether we know Jesus or we don't know Jesus. Whether we follow Jesus or we don't follow Jesus. There's one thing we all have in common, and that is that we have a sinful nature. One of the reasons that it's very difficult for us to live in community with each other as a church is because we have a sinful nature. And oftentimes we, we bring that, we pack that up, we pack all our baggage up, and we bring it to church with us. And sometimes it unleashes itself on, on other people. The reason we battle in our marriages, frankly, is because of our sinful nature. It's impossible to be perfect. And there are many, many sins we battle all the time. Here's just a few that apply to me or have applied to me in my life. Uh, get jealous. Get greedy. Eat too much. Want what someone else has? Lust? You know, we, we Google for porn or other stuff that we're really not supposed to see or want to see. We act out immorally. We get drunk. We get high. We get angry. We lose our tempers. We judge people. We gossip. We lie. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean... We don't really need to be reminded of our sinfulness. It's ugly, isn't it? It's an ugly picture. Yeah, I haven't lost you yet, have I? It's an ugly, it's, it's, none of that's pretty. It's ugly stuff. And it's all stuff that we, that we deal with. And I, I find it really interesting on Facebook seeing all these posts that condemn that poor kid, Justin Bieber. That poor little boy. So many people angry with Justin Bieber. And Jesus says it this way. Take the tree out of your own eye before you deal with that tiny little speck in Justin Bieber's eye. That's the King James Version. <laughs> Listen, I don't know about you. Maybe you feel like I do today that you've lost some battles. Right? Maybe you're feeling a little beat up. Maybe something terrible has happened to you, or maybe you've made some terrible choices, even sinful ones, and you're dealing with the consequences of that. I don't, I don't know what those battles are for you. But the, there's a, a really strong likelihood that I'm not the only guy in the room today that's, that's dealing with, with a spiritual battle. You could just be dealing with a round of good old-fashioned guilt. A lot of people bring that to the table. If you're struggling spiritually right now, here's what you need to know. Here's what I need to know. Jesus is victorious. 
Jesus is victorious. He is the victory. Evil can conquer you if you make the choice to let it. But you can choose to follow Jesus and experience victory. Everyone has to make that choice for themselves. And your faith in Jesus, this is what 1 John teaches us. Your faith in Jesus is the victory that overcomes the darkness of this world. So that's why it's vital for you to refuse to listen to the lies of the world around you. This is why your faith in Jesus is indispensable in moments where you're battling spiritually or physically. Your faith is indispensable because that is what provides victory in those battles. Sometimes people will choose to walk away from their faith in Jesus. And they let evil conquer them. So Paul gives us a couple of things in Romans chapter 12. <coughs> how to live this victorious life with Jesus. And I don't know about you, but it's a really good thing this isn't rocket science. Because I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And it's a really good thing that you don't need a Bible theological degree to figure this out. It's really not that difficult to understand. It may be more difficult to do. But it's not that difficult to understand. There are a couple of things that Romans chapter 12 teaches us to experience this victory. So that as Romans 12 concludes, we can make the choice to live with Jesus and not allow evil to conquer us. The first thing is to use the gifts God has given you. Use the gifts that God has given you. Are you guys familiar with a guy named Zig Ziglar? He was a real famous motivational speaker. He's written a ton of books. But there's one book that he wrote. It's called See You at the Top. It was probably his most famous or most popular. And in that book, he tells the story of an old Indian man living in Oklahoma. This old Indian man lived in poverty his whole life. Eked out a living on a few acres of land that he had inherited. But he was beyond poor. But one day, they discovered oil on his land. Completely changed his life. He went from being one of the poorest men in town to being one of the most wealthiest men in his state, in all of Oklahoma. The first thing that this old Indian did was he bought the best, biggest, brand new Cadillac. Best, awesome car he could find on the lot. He wanted the longest car in the whole county. And so he added four tires to the rear end of that thing. Two on each side, extended it way out. Wanted the nicest, shiniest, newest, biggest, longest Cadillac. And he wanted everybody to see it. He would dress up in new clothes. And he would take a ride every day into town. And he was a friendly old soul. So when he was riding through town, he'd want to wave at people. He'd turn all the way around in his cat. He'd wave at everyone. But you know what's interesting? This poor old Indian, I guess we could say this rich old Indian, never saw anyone. And he never ran into anyone, even though he really, really wanted to. There was nothing wrong with the car, but the reason he never saw anyone is because in front of that big, beautiful car was two horses harnessed to it. That old Indian had never learned to drive. He had never learned to take a key and stick it into an ignition. He had no idea how to start that car. 
He only knew what he had saw growing up. And the only thing he knew was he had a very expensive, nice carriage with absolutely no power in it. Under the hood was a hundred plus horsepower ready and willing to go, but that old Indian was content to just let two horses pull that brand new caddy. Here's how Paul puts it in Romans chapter 12. In his grace, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the gift to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, then serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, then be encouraging. If it is given, then give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. You know what I find in this scripture? The word give over and over and over. You know why? Because God is a giver. God gives to you all the time. God gives you grace. He gives you mercy. He gives you compassion. He gives you forgiveness. Well, he's given you Jesus. Picture that Vernon showed earlier. That's a gift God gave to you. He gives you his Holy Spirit. He's given you the word, the Bible. Man, God has given you so much. And his holy expectation is that you will use what you've been given to bless and serve other people. You don't have to be that old Indian that has no idea the kind of power that's under the hood. You have the same power in you, Romans chapter 11 teaches us, or Romans chapter 8 verse 11, that rose Jesus from the dead. That's power. So use your faith the way God intended you to use it. Love God and love others and share Jesus with people and show Jesus to people. We gather as a church community so that we can send each other out to do that. There's power in Jesus. So that's the first thing. Use the gifts that God has given you to live with the power of Jesus. Use the gifts that God has given you. And then lastly, secondly, live your faith for real. Live your faith for real. I'm guessing, it's just a guess on my part, that you know fake people. I'm guessing that you might even know fake Christians. Apparently Paul did because he made a special point to tell us to be genuine. Here's what he says in Romans chapter 12. Don't just pretend to love others. I'm not even sure what that looks like. How do you pretend to love others? Well, I guess I could figure that out. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Love each other with genuine affection. For me, the most important quality of being genuine is availability. Has anyone ever said this to you? Hey, if you ever need a hand, let me know. Give me a call if you ever need something. So then you call them. There's always some reason why they can't help, right? Every time you need help, they'll ignore you. They're pretending. Availability is genuine love. Being genuine is being available. Romans chapter 12 continues to teach us that we must practice hospitality. We must always be ready to help those in need. That's being available. These are the words Paul uses. I'm not making this up. These are words Paul uses. So there are a lot of people who might claim to be followers of Jesus, but they're not genuine if they're not available to love God and love others. 
If they're not available to serve God and serve others, evil will conquer a person, even one who claims to be a Christian person, if they're not living their faith for real. Jesus shines a light on our life. He's the light of the world. That's what he said. So he shines a light on your life this morning. What does his light conclude in you? What does his light expose in you? Are you living with victory this morning? Or do you feel, do you feel kind of defeated? I'm going to ask the worship team to make their way up here. Here's how Paul begins Romans chapter 12. We started by bringing up the statement that he concludes with, but here's how he begins Romans chapter 12. I plead with you. Another way to say that is I beg you. Maybe even Paul would get on his knees to say this, but I'm not going to do that. I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of what he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world, but let, there's that choice word again, allow, make the choice. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you will know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. There are four things really that you need to grow spiritually. You need a mission, a place to serve, something to do for the kingdom purpose of God. You need to serve and bless others. That's, that's how you grow spiritually. As you pour out love and compassion, you're going to need to refill love and compassion in your own life. And you can do that with the word of God. As you pour out love and compassion on others, you're going to need to refill that love and compassion. And you can do that with prayer through the power of the Holy Spirit. As you pour out love and compassion, you're going to need to refill that love and compassion. And you do that with your faith community. So if you're struggling to grow spiritually, last week we talked about the five on five. Just, it's just an idea. It's just a place to help you get started. Uh, every week on the back of your outline, I'm giving you step one. It's just a place to start. And once you're doing that consistently, you can move to step two, and then to step three, and then to step four. You can find it online too if you want to. But here's the thing. This is what Romans chapter 12 teaches us. We can make a choice to live with Jesus by keeping our faith real, by living for real in our faith, being genuine. And we experience that victory by using the gifts that God has given us. So I hope you're living with power today. I hope you're using the gifts he gives you. I hope you're living your faith for real. Because there is no power in hell that can steal your faith. But you can choose to give it away. The power of faith in Jesus is there for those who follow him. So I'm going to begin or conclude this morning with the same question I asked at the beginning. Has, has evil conquered you? Have you made that choice to let evil take over? Or are you going to live with Jesus and experience that power? Not everyone's going to do that. Not everybody around you is going to make the choice to do that. But you have the responsibility to make the choice for you. Regardless of what other people around you are doing or saying. You have the choice to make Jesus your Savior today. And to live with Him today. It is your choice. Nobody else can make that choice for you. Let's pray. Dear God, we just want to say how grateful we are for Jesus. Thankful for your word. Because there is power in Jesus. There is victory in Jesus. Well, there's, that's the only victory there is. God, every day we fight battles. Every day we, we struggle. We struggle with our sinful nature. We st struggle with stuff that happens to us. Sometimes this, it can rock our faith. It can steal our joy. We can allow our hope to just be ripped right out of our life. 
And a lot of people make that kind of choice. But God, I'm going to, I'm not. I'm going to make the choice to live for you. And there are a lot of people in this room that are going to make the same choice today. They're going to make that same choice every single day because they love you. And I say thank you, God, for them and for their example. And I pray for those that are in our room right now who are struggling. Right now they're dealing with, they feel defeated. And I pray for them. And I pray, God, that they will listen to you. They will listen to your word. They will listen to your son, Jesus, who teaches them that they can live a life in victory. You are a giving God. You give to us, so much to us. And your expectation is that we will use those gifts to bless other people. So help us do that. Help us use our gifts today. Help us use our gifts this week. And thank you, God, for allowing us all those opportunities to pour into the lives of other people. And thank you, God, for giving us opportunities to be real, to be genuine, to be available. And we thank you, God, for those opportunities, too. Help us, God, to grow more and more like Jesus as we live on this earth by serving others and by being refilled by your word with prayer and with our faith community. We thank you for these things. We thank you for Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. I'm going to stand right here at the front. If you have any, any response this morning or if you have any prayer this morning, I'll be right here and come up while we, while we stand, while we sing this song. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moments and my days, let them grow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move.
choice, Father. We want to be faithful to you. So through the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would aid us in this coming week to be faithful to you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.